These sessions I keep as an audio meditation. Remember the words of the Master is not merely words. Words is a medium to communicate, to create a communion. Riding the wings of the words, the energy field, as what Sufi masters call Tawajjo, the energy field, is communicated to you. It is this energy field that works in you and brings about transformation. It works on various centers. Words are not important. If you remain within the quagmire of the words, you are lost. Sometimes words may be important, but what flows with the word is the energy field and this energy field creates an inner environment in you. It brings a different kind of a joy. It takes you away from the din and bustle of the world, acquaints you with your inner harmony, oneness, silence and bliss. Unless a master can establish a commune with your innerness, your harmony, your silence, then meditation does not happen. These are the devices to create a communion between the silence, the harmony and oneness of the master and a similar pole within the seeker. It happens sometimes when some work is to be done within a seeker. The seeker is stuck at a particular level of chakra or the psycho center. Then automatically it works at that center. It creates a stir and then automatically this is an auto correction process. Sometimes when you are using the the same method of Skype that we are using. Sometimes there is a break of communication. Automatically the screen reads. There is a problem encountered. We are working on you and you do not need to do anything. Something like this happens in the communion with the Master. So these sessions are devised like that. Because of the present day situation, modern technology, we must embrace all that is available to us. Long time when we used to have the meditation sessions, everyone has to gather at a particular place and then the session will begin. Then it, the people from other parts of the world who cannot reach physically for the meditation sessions. However, when I became aware of the modern technology. I found that this is the easiest way. At a particular point in time, you all can gather, be in communion with the Master without being physically present. It is the meditation beyond time and space. Meditation beyond time and space. You are sitting in your own home and you are in communion with me. With this people from different parts of the world, for instance, it is noon time in Sweden, it is morning time in Trinidad, it is afternoon 3.30 in India. Time zones are different, we are separated by a distance, but at the level of consciousness at the level of communion we are together. This is meditation. You can, since you have this equipment, this facility of a sky, you can commune far and wide within this globe, but there is a space beyond this globe that Sufis call as Alame Gap the plane of consciousness. 
The energy field, as Albert Einstein says, cannot be destroyed, its form can be changed. The energy field of the past masters, Jesus, Buddha, Krishna, Mahabir, Jaratrustra, Podhidharma, is available. But we do not have the instrument to commune with that energy field. Just as science has developed the technology that you and I can overcome the distance, time and space and be in commune simultaneously, being at different places, being in different time zones. One day, maybe a situation may come in distant future when we can commune with the past masters. With this, I am continuing this morning's session. Wonder not confusion is the way of life. Confusion is the state of mind and with confusion, misery, anger, ego and aloneness comes. Amidst all these and life's roots, confusion remains and one has to learn to live with it because life cannot be sorted out. It is so big. One wonders why confusion arises. Indeed, confusion arises because of our impossible effort to sort out everything. Confusion is indeed not to be sorted out. There is no way to know everything. So something or the other always remains unknown. That unknown goes on creating confusion in our minds. And you remember, that which is, is unknown and unknowable. Life is mystery. And the moment we try to solve this mystery, we cannot solve it and confusion is the outcome. Remember, confusion is mind's incapacity to know the unknown and unknowable. You can place it as a coat in your room, in your office, or get it inscribed on the forehead. Confusion is mind's incapacity to know the unknown and unknowable. The more mind knows, still more remains to be known. And instead of being aware, mind always seeks to know. There are myriads of mysteries. Mind has to learn with these. Master lives with mysteries. So one has to learn to live with it. And then by and by it disappears. And instead of confusion, a totally different new dimension arises. This is the dimension of wonder. This is the outcome of innocence. Look at a child. His eyes are full of wonder. But as an adult, our eyes are full of confusion. It is the same energy that becomes confusion or wonder. If there is a spontaneity, if there is innocence, wonder is the outcome. And if there is, if the innocence is replaced with cunningness, set pattern, conditionings, then wonder is replaced with confusion. With the same energy, the child simply feels wonder. Certainly, he is not in any way concerned about solving anything. Instead, he is ready to accept the mystery of it. He has no conflict between the known, unknown and unknowable. He does not make any distinction between the real and the dream. Certainly, he makes no difference in any way. Sometimes it happens that a child may have been playing with a toy in his dreams and when he wakes, he cries for the same toy and inquires its whereabouts. This is natural and spontaneous for the child. We go on saying that it was just a dream, but he continues. For him, there is no difference, no distinction between the dream and the real. If we, you too do not make any distinction between confusion cannot arise. 
That is why Jesus emphasized to be childlike. Someone asked, Master, who can enter the kingdom of God? He says, one who is childlike. He did not use the word childish. Childlike implies the innocence with consciousness, the spontaneity with consciousness. So the more a person tries to solve things, the more confused he will be. Intellectuals become more confused than emotional ones. Then there are people as well who live by the gut feeling. They never become confused because they simply like things as they come without any preconceived idea. The moment we think about life as if it is a problem, we are bound to be in confusion. The moment we start thinking that it is not a problem to be solved, instead a mystery to be lived, that there is no way to know and whatsoever we know will remain always infinitesimal, yet limited. The unknown will remain infinite and unlimited air long. However, we can create a small candlelight around ourselves, but the whole existence remains dark. How can you be unconfused? You will remain confused if you do not accept that darkness and do not accept it as the mystery of life. Life is mysterious. You have to accept it. Darkness is there. You have to accept it. Yes, there are bound to be problems and there are many things which one would like to sort out, but they cannot be sorted out. Indeed, you will have to learn to live with it. Once you start learning to live with it, by and by confusion disappears. Remember, confusion is an interpretation of human mind. Confusion is an interpretation of human mind. When you accept everything as it is, then instead of confusion, the same energy fills you more and more with wonder. You are simply surprised by the mystery of life. You are simply surprised that nothing can be solved. Life is indeed not a puzzle, instead a mystery. And mystery is more fundamental than us. We emerge out of this mystery one day. The mystery was there before we came in. Also the mystery will be there when we are no more. This mystery is infinite and oceanic. We are just small waves on the surface of the ocean. Confusion arises and then the wave sometimes goes mad. We are unaware of our oceanic existence and continue to live like a wave. In the eastern way, the same energy transforms with a totally different outlook. Thus is paid Charitrus. This is a great poetry, as great as Bhagavad Gita. However, Charitrus went mad. Because a wrong notion exists in the western mind that everything has to be solved and finally reduced to statistics. No corner of the mind should be left in the dark. Everything should finally be put in black and white. This creates tremendous confusion. Be childlike. There is no need to solve anything. In an effort to solve it, you will miss your life. Those beautiful moments which could have been of tremendous joy will be lost in solving the problems of life. Learn to live with mysteries of life. Life will become a song, a dance, a celebration. The wise man, the man of awareness, drops all question. The moment you drop questioning, confusion vanishes. The confusion is created by our questioning mind. Meditation creates an unquestioning mind and thus an unquestioning consciousness, a great trust, deep acceptance 
and reverence for life meditation creates. Indeed, meditation creates a great trust, deep acceptance and reverence for every aspect of life. In fact, any effort to solve the mystery is disrespectful. It is certainly an effort to reduce God to syllogism and love into chemistry. Love is alchemical. Mind wants to reduce everything manageable. And wherever it finds that things are unmanageable, beyond us or beyond its grasp, we are in confusion. Turn confusion into mystery. Life will be benediction. Meditate and let it be the way of life and approach of living. Create more wonders in life, in your day-to-day -day life. Keep the vision of wonder. When you see something, let there be a spontaneous wonder. Oh, wow! You have seen some people have a natural tendency of, oh, wow! Just the way you say, wow, is an expression of wonder. Meditate and let it be the way of life and approach to living. Create more wonder in life, more awe in life. Be childlike, full of surprise and eyes glittering with wonder. Also remain available for more and more surprise. Let each moment be an encounter with the mysterious. Let each moment be an encounter with the mysterious. Meditate each moment. Continue to help people along the path wherever you are. One day certainly you attain eyes glittering with wonder. When your eyes begin to glitter with wonder, knowingly and consciously, confusion will vanish from the horizon of your mind. You have entered the realm beyond the mind. You have known what it is beyond the horizons of the mind. Beyond the horizons of the mind there is wonder, there is song, there is a dance, there is celebration. All that is beyond the horizon of the mind is the consciousness, is the understanding, is the awakening of a Jesus, of a Buddha, of a Laosi, of a Jaratrustra of a Mahabir, of a Bodhidharma. Let this be your way.